In this Python Quick Tips video, I'll be talking about the zip function. Now, before I talk about that, I want to quickly introduce a problem that the zip function can help us solve. So let's say, for example, we have two lists, x and y. Now, they can contain a different amount of elements that doesn't matter. What I want to do is loop through them and find the elements that are the same and find the elements that are different at the same index. So essentially, since this 9 here is an extra element, we won't bother with that. So what I'm going to do to do that without my knowledge of the zip function is I'm going to take the minimum length of x and y and loop through that using a variable i. Now what I'll do is I'll check if the value at xi is the same as the value at yi, and if it is, I'll print out same, otherwise I will print out not same. Now when I run this, we get an output that looks something like this, same as 1, 1, not same, 2, 1, same, and so on. Now, this is kind of tedious, and there must be a better way to do something like this. And there is, and that is called the zip function. So we can actually avoid this entire mess of a for loop by using zip. Now what zip does, and I'll show you without the for loop first, is it takes any amount of iterable objects and packs them together into tuples. Now some of you were telling me it's called tuples as well. Either way, that's just the way I pronounce it, doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the list of zip of x and y and just show you what this looks like. So when I print this, you can see we get a list of tuples here. We have 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 4, 7. Essentially what this does is matches up items in the list. So 1 goes with 1, 2 goes with 1, 3, 3, 4, 7, and then we will omit any other items. Now if I do this the other way, so y, x, this will still work. We'll get pretty much the same thing just with the y coordinate first and the x coordinate second. And notice we're not including the nine. Now we can do multiple elements in this as well. I can do something like z equals and we could do, you know, like one, two, like this. And now if we throw z into here, what we're going to get is, well, a list of three tuples. But this time, since there's only two elements in z, we're only going to get two tuples here. So how can we use this knowledge now, the zip function to help save us some time in that previous problem. So I'm going to get rid of Z here and I'm going to do this now with zip. So what I'm going to do is say for I J in zip X Y. If I equals equals J print same. I guess we'll do a capital here and then otherwise. So else we will print not same. Okay, so there we go. So let's run this now. And we get the same output, same, not same, same, not same. So essentially, we're looping through these tuples that we've built here. So x and y assigning i to the first one, j to the second one. Then we're checking if those values are the same, printing same. Otherwise, we're printing not same. So this is very useful. This can save us a lot of time. And if you're trying to create combinations of items from iterable objects like lists, zip can definitely help you out with that. So anyways, this has been Python quick tips on zip. This is very useful. You're going to use it a lot in for loops, maybe in while loops as well. So get comfortable with how this works and try to think about the way that you can implement solutions using this because often it will save you a lot of time and result in you not having to build an entirely new list by yourself.